out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole. I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade. And yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. The poem is called Inviticus. It was written by William Ernest Henley in 1875. The image Inviticus draws is that of the strong, self-made man. The picture is perhaps a woman, independent, unashamed. This man anchored solidly to himself stands unmoved against the buffetings of this world. Firmly grasping the rudder of her own life, this woman steers her own course and seeks her own way. I am the master of my fate. I am the, cap am the captain of my soul. The words are so inspiring. I can see them now on a poster. But in spite of the fact they're inspiring, maybe we should stop and ask if they're true. Are we really each the masters of our fate? Are we really each the captains of our souls? Do you live independently of me? Do I live independently of you? Do the actions of others really have no bearing on our future or on our lives? An apostle named Paul answers those questions in Romans chapter 5, verses 12 through 21. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Romans 5, verses 12 through 21. Let's start with just the first three verses of our passage. In Romans 5, 12 through 14, Paul reminds us that in fact the willful choice of just one man a man named Adam has exerted control over the life of every human being who has ever lived since. Listen as Paul reveals whether we are or aren't the masters of our own fate, the captains of our own soul. Verses 12 through 15, chapter 5 of Romans, describes the human condition, our human condition. Verse 12, therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. So what's the Bible say? Are you the master of your own fate? Am I the captain of my own soul? The answer is clear. No man lives unto himself. And no woman can divorce herself from the rest of humanity. In verse 12, Paul says that because of Adam, because of Adam, death is the master of our fate. And because of the first man, sin, sin is the captain of our souls. Paul says sin came into the world through one man and death through sin. So death spread to all men because all sinned. 
As we continue to read this morning in Romans 5, we will discover that God does not simply relate to you and me as individuals. Paul helps us understand today that God relates to us all together corporately as well. God relates to us according to our family identity and not just our individual identity. You see, according to the Apostle Paul, there's only two branches of the human family. And each one of us belongs to one branch of the family or the other branch. Even here today, Romans 5 reveals that each one of us are either the offspring of Adam, and being the offspring of Adam is defined in verses 12 through 14, or we are the offspring of Jesus Christ, defined for us later in verses 15 through 21. Whatever the case, we do not and we cannot exist before God apart from the forefather that we choose. So what does it mean to belong to Adam? What does it mean to be the offspring of Adam? In verses 12 through 14, Paul reminds us that by birth, each one of us starts out life as a descendant of Adam. So who is our father, Adam, and what did Adam do? Genesis chapter 2 tells us that Adam was the first man. Adam was the man God created from the dust of the earth. Adam was the man into whom God breathed the breath of life. God created Adam without sin. And he gave Adam a wife named Eve. Eve. And then he gave Adam and Eve together Eden as a place to live and a place to enjoy fellowship with him. God gave them free reign. He gave them freedom to eat the fruit of every tree in the garden and to enjoy. Except for one tree, just one tree. Only about the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil did God say to Adam, in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Then in Genesis 3, the serpent came questioning the truth of God's word. And choosing lies over truth, choosing fear over faith, choosing rebellion over submission, Adam violated God's one simple law. Adam willfully and blatantly sinned. And now here in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, Paul tells us that Adam's sin was not his sin alone. Paul says that in Adam we sinned too. More than that, Paul says, because we sinned in Adam, we also die with Adam. And that's why verse 18 tells us that because of Adam's trespass, we all stand condemned. Because of the sin of one man, we all stand condemned. So much for us being the masters of our fate and the captains of our souls. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but that's not fair. Why should I be condemned for what Adam did? I wasn't even there. Actually, if I understand the Bible correctly, you and I were there. We were there in Adam. How so? Genesis chapter 14 helps us understand. Now, Genesis 14 tells the story of how a man named Abraham, Abraham, the father of Israel, how Abraham offered a tithe to a priest named Melchizedek. Now, later in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews, we are told that when Abraham offered that tithe to Melchizedek, 
one of his descendants named Levi was also offering that tithe. Hebrews 7 verses 9 and 10 says that Levi, who was still in the loins of his ancestor, Abraham, was paying his tithe through his father, Abraham, even before he was physically born. Now, I'm not going to stand here this morning and try to pretend that I can fully explain that. But the principle is clear. When God considers humanity, He doesn't see us as billions of disconnected individuals. When God looks at humanity, He sees us as people who, as Hebrews put it, existed in the loins of our father, Adam, from the very moment of creation. God sees us as belonging to Adam. God sees us as being in Adam from the very beginning of time. And that means when Adam sinned, we all sinned too. More than that, it means that we would have done exactly what Adam did if Satan had directly confronted us instead of him. We're in Adam. And so there's really no denying it. Adam's sin was our sin too. And that means when death came into the world through Adam, death came to all of us. And that's what Paul affirms in verses 13 and 14 when he writes, For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law, and yet, yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. Paul's point here is simply that with or without the law, with or without the law, every man and every woman still sins. Because with or without the law, every man and every woman, because of sin, dies. Because of sin, dies. Death is the evidence that all men and all women sin. You see, if you're in Adam, and if you remain in Adam, you are and you always will be subject to sin and to death. But what does Paul mean at the end of verse 14 when he calls Adam a type of the one who was to come? Well, first we have to decide who the one to come is. And in the rest of this chapter it becomes clear that the one to come is Jesus Christ. But how can that be? How can Paul call Adam the first sinner, a type of Jesus who never sinned at all? We find our answer by looking at the impact of each man's life. The universal impact of Adam's life and the universal impact of the life of Jesus are compared and contrasted for us in verses 15 through 21. Romans 5, verses 15 through 21 reads, But the free gift is not like the trespass, the trespass of Adam. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. If because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more 
Much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to the justification and life for all men. For as by one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. So by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. Now the law came to increase the trespass. But where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So that as sin reigned in death, grace Grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you hear that? Adam is a type of Christ. Because in the same way, Adam's trespass condemns all humanity to sin and to death. So Christ's obedience redeems a new humanity to righteousness and to life. Which brings me to the most important question you will ever answer for yourself. Today, do you live under Adam or do you live under Christ? If you live under Adam, verse 19 says that his sin makes you a hopeless sinner too. If you live under Adam, verse 17 says that death reigns over you. Here's what that means. In Adam, you are even today spiritually dead. In Adam, you have no spiritual life. In Adam, you have no relationship with God. More than that, because you are spiritually dead in Adam, the moment you die physically, you will also die eternally in hell. Scripture calls that the second death. In Adam you will be forever separated from God and from His love. And that is why verse 18 says that in Adam, all men stand condemned. Because of Adam's trespass, all men stand condemned. But even if, even if you're in Adam today, know that you don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay in Adam. See, that's the gospel. That's the good news about Jesus. Even as we stand condemned in Adam, Paul says we can be justified in Christ. Verse 16. And the free gift, the free gift is not like the result of one man's sin. For judgment followed for judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. But the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. And in the book of Romans, justification means being forever declared not guilty of sin. Being delivered from condemnation. But you know, moving from Adam's family into the family of Christ... It means more than simply being forgiven of your sin. In the same way we all die in Adam, Paul says we can also be made alive in Jesus Christ. Don't miss what this text says. Paul says, just like Adam's death became your death, through faith, the life of Jesus Christ can become your life. Listen again, verse 17. If because of one man's trespass, Adam's trespass, death reigned, death reigned through that one man, 
much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life, in life, through the one man, Jesus Christ. But there's still more. Paul goes on to remind us that in the same way Adam's sin became your sin, so Christ's righteousness will also become your righteousness when you put your faith in Him. Verse 19, For as by one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. In Adam, we stand condemned. In Christ, we get justified. In Adam, we die. In Christ, we live. In Adam, we become sinners. In Christ, we become righteous in God's eyes. Either we are in Adam or we are in Christ. There is no other option. There's no in-between. There's no neutrality. You're in Adam or you're in Christ. And so we learn from Paul that none of us are masters of our own fate. None of us are captains of our own souls. Every single one of us is bound. We either live under Adam or we live under Christ. Your life, your destiny is forever joined to one or the other. So to whom? To whom is your life bound today? Do you live under Adam? Through him, you are subject to the reign of sin and death. Or do you live under Christ? If Adam is your answer, are you satisfied in Adam? Are you satisfied? Or will you give your life to Jesus Christ? Do you want Christ's righteousness to become your righteousness? Do you want His life to become your life? If so then you need to know who Jesus is and you need to know what He did to deliver you from the dominion of Adam. Listen again, verse 18. Paul says, As one trespass, Adam's trespass, led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness, one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. So what act did Jesus do to free us from the realm of Adam, the realm of sin and death? Well, the Bible says that Jesus, who is God become man, Jesus died on the cross to pay our sin penalty and He rose from the grave to live to be our Savior, our Lord, our King, to share His life, eternal life, with us. And that means coming to Jesus means trusting only what He did for you when He died on the cross and rose from the grave. Coming to Jesus means recognizing you can't save yourself. You can't deliver yourself from the realm of sin and death. In other words, rejecting your old life in Adam for a new life in Christ means knowing that salvation comes only by grace alone, through faith alone in Him. If you take nothing else home with you today from this message, take this. It's all about grace. It's all about grace. And that's exactly what Paul tells us here in Romans 5, 15 through 21. This text bleeds the grace of God. Grace oozes out of every verse almost. Listen to this. Verse 15. Verse 15, Paul declares that it's the free gift 
The free gift, not the earned gift. The free gift that's not like the trespass of Adam. For, Paul says in verse 15, if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God, the grace of God, and the free gift by grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. Grace abounds. Verse 16, and the what? The free gift. The free gift is not like the result of one man's sin. Verse 17, if death reign through the one man, much more will those who receive what? The abundance, the superabundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life. Verse 20, Paul says, but where sin increased, what happened? Grace, grace abounded all the more. Verse 21, so that as sin reigned in death, grace, grace might also reign through righteousness leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Grace. Lord, help us see left to ourselves in Adam. We remain slaves to sin and to death. But the abounding, the overflowing grace of God in Christ, it sets us free. Grace sets us free. So if you are here today trying to be good enough to get to heaven, give it up. Give it up. Your efforts in Adam, your efforts make you More worthy of hell, not more worthy of heaven. If you're here today trying to earn your way with God by keeping the law, then you need to understand you are only making things worse for yourself. Because that's what verse 20 says outright. The law comes to increase trespass. You want to make it worse for yourself? Try keeping the law. If you seek salvation through the law, you will be forever condemned by the law. That's what Paul says here. The only way to escape your bondage to sin and to death in Adam is to receive the superabundance of God's grace and the free gift of righteousness found only in Jesus and what He did for you. What He did for you. Apart from God's grace in Jesus Christ, you are still in Adam. And if you are still in Adam, you are still in bondage to sin. If you're in Adam, you are still subject to death. And it's a death that will never end. Today, is the day to come to Jesus. Isn't it time to let His life become your life? Isn't it time to let His righteousness be your righteousness too? Isn't it time to drink in the abundant grace of God in Jesus? Isn't it time to say goodbye to Adam? Say hello to Jesus. Repent of your sins. Put your trust in Christ.